physical property is a characteristic of matter or a property that can be assessed without the matter undergoing a chemical change. So examples of this are density, color, hardness, melting and boiling point, electrical conductivity. I can observe the color of a substance with my eyes, for example, without that substance having to undergo some kind of change. So any time that I can observe a substance of a property and that substance does not have to change for me to see that property, then that's a physical property. A physical change is a change in the state or properties of matter without an accompanying, accompanying change in its chemical composition. So it's very similar to a physical property. A physical change is when a change can occur without the substance itself changing uh, chemical composition. So the melting of solid wax into liquid wax is an example of a physical change. Although the burning of a candle is an example of a chemical change because here the candle wax is being converted um, into carbon dioxide molecules. So the wax melting is physical, the wax burning is chemical. Here the water boiling is physical. Another way that we can determine whether a change is physical or chemical is to ask ourselves whether or not it's reversible. So physical changes are always reversible. For example, the boiling water can turn from a liquid into a gas. And as a gas, it can travel to the top of the pot and it can sit on the lid. And when the gas particles hit the lid, they can condense and turn back into liquid particles. So the liquid turns into a gas and the gas turns into a liquid and it's water the whole time. That's a physical change. Same with the wax. The solid wax, when the candle, before the candle is lit, the entire candle is solid. And as it's lit and the, it starts to heat up, some of the wax will melt. And if you blow the candle out, then that liquid wax will eventually turn back into a solid. And that is a reversible change. So therefore, it's physical. Alternatively, a chemical property is one in which the matter, the type of matter does change. So um, examples of chemical properties are things like flammability or toxicity or acidity, reactivity, heat of combustion. So to determine whether or not a substance is flammable, I have to light it on fire. And before it's lit on fire and after it has been lit on fire, it is a different substance. The substance has changed. So in order for me to assess that property, flammability, I have to change the substance. So if I have to change the substance to see a property, then that must be a chemical property. So um, a chemical property might be whether or not something can rust. Um, I, so um, uh, when iron is left out in water and exposed to oxygen, then it can turn into iron oxide. So the iron, uh, part of the iron molecules, when the iron is pure, don't contain any oxygen. And as it's left in the water and the oxygen, then it can turn into iron oxide and eventually there will be oxygen atoms in with the iron atoms as well. So if the chemical substance has changed, then that must be a chemical property. Um, another chemical property, for example, of chromium on the other side is that it doesn't rust. It does not oxidize when it's exposed to water and oxygen. A chemical change is a change that occurs when a substance has changed from one substance into another. So the chemicals themselves have, uh, the atoms and molecules have been rearranged and they've turned into different substances. So here in this first example, this is copper wire. Um, and copper wire consists only of, of copper atoms. Pure copper is an element. So this is um, just copper, pure copper atoms. And when it's introduced into nitric acid, then it begins to dissolve and it begins to uh, turn into copper nitrate and some nitrogen dioxide gas is released. So the copper changes from copper metal into copper nitrate and the nitric acid changes from nitric acid into nitrogen dioxide gas. So when the compounds themselves undergo some kind of change and they turn into different chemicals, then that's a chemical change, not a physical change. Um, lighting a match on fire or lighting anything on fire 
uh, before it's lit on fire, it's one substance, and after it's lit on fire, it's a different substance. It has changed. Same with cooking meat. Um, same with bananas ripening and turning from green to yellow to brown. Those are examples of chemical changes where the chemical that was green is gone, and now um, a chemical that is brown is appearing. So those are different chemicals that are giving those different colors. So whereas we said before that physical changes were reversible, water could turn to steam and steam can turn to water, a chemical change is irreversible. This copper metal can turn into copper nitrate within this uh, chemical system here, but the copper nitrate can't spontaneously, without some kind of outside intervention, turn back into copper metal. So um, chemical changes are irreversible in a way that physical changes are not. So if I light a match and it, it's burned and I have a burned up match when it's all done, I can't take that burned up match and somehow turn it back into an unburned match. So anytime a change is irreversible, then I would consider that to be a chemical change. Some of these symbols are symbols that you might see when you're looking at different chemical substances. And these symbols tell you about um, the, the dangers that are associated with that chemical substance. So chemical substances can be dangerous in different ways. So one way that a chemical substance can be dangerous is by being flammable, of course. So um, gasoline has a very high fire hazard uh, because gasoline is incredibly flammable and that's a very dangerous aspect of gasoline. That's a chemical property of gasoline that we have to watch out for when we're storing it or when we're handling gasoline. Um, another chemical property is reactivity. So uh, reactivity generally refers to whether or not something is going to explode if it is um, if it receives a shock, or, uh, if it falls off of a counter or if um, somebody shakes it or something. Um, so examples of that are uh, nitroglycerin or um, TNT, uh, dynamite, things that um, if they were to be hit with a hammer, for example, they might explode. So that is um, another chemical property that something has. And, and if a substance is um, going to explode and then it does explode, that's a chemical change. Because before it explodes and after it explodes, those are different substances at that point. Finally, another chemical property um, are health hazards. So health hazards are things um, that uh, might refer to carcin um, whether something is a carcinogen. So um, it might cause cancer. Um, a health hazard might refer to something that's a mutagen that might um, affect uh, reproductive systems. Um, health hazards can refer to uh, things that are irritants, like to your eyes, um, things that are corrosive to your skin. So health hazards uh, are kind of fit into that category. And down here, the white ones, specific hazards are um, whether things are oxidizers, perhaps, and so they wouldn't, you wouldn't want to store that next to something that's a reducing agent. You wouldn't want to store acids by bases, um, or alkali is a base, so don't store acid and alkali together. Whether something is corrosive, don't use water. It might react with water. It might be radioactive. Those are the kinds of symbols that you might see um, on a jar of chemicals, and it, those are listing the chemical properties of a substance. Okay, finally, extensive properties and intensive properties. So an extensive property is one that depends on the amount of matter that's present. So if I have um, a, a cup full of coffee and a jug full of coffee, then the mass is going to be different because the amount of matter present, the amount of coffee present is different. So when I have a different amount of stuff, the kinds of the properties that will change because I have a different amount of stuff, those are called extensive. So the, the mass will change if I have a different amount of stuff. The volume will change if I have a different amount of stuff. Heat is the amount of energy I have per amount. So if the amount changes, then the amount of 
of thermal energy I have, the amount of heat I have, changes because the amount of substance has changed. Um, on the other hand, intensive properties are those that do not depend on the amount of substance present. So if I have um, a jug of coffee or a cup of coffee, the density is the same. If I have a jug of coffee or a cup of coffee, um, if they came from the same place and they're sealed the same way, then the temperature is the same. So substances, it doesn't matter if I have a big scoop or a small scoop, and the, if the property doesn't change, depending on the amount of stuff, then those are examples of intensive properties. So the periodic table um, is categorized and organized the way it is according to chemical properties. So generally, the atoms that are, or the elements that are within a chemical family here, a chemical period, these are, um, excuse me, these are the uh, groups. So the, all the elements that are within the same column, they generally have the sim same or similar chemical properties. So all of these alkali metals, for example, um, if you, they are placed within water, they have a violent reaction with water. Um, over here, these are the noble gases on the other side. The noble gases all have similar chemical properties, which is that they don't make bonds to other atoms. The, the noble gases um, always come one atom at a time and they don't make bonds. So we can say that pretty much about most of the columns in the periodic table, that the elements that are within that column all have similar chemical properties. And that's um, the, where the periodic table came from. That's the origin of the periodic table was recognizing that certain substances had the similar chemical properties and they belonged together in some kind of group. And this was the way that they were grouped together.